In this episode, we talk about provisioning for off-the-grid sailing to suit your boat. And we also show you how you can continue to eat very well even after all your fresh fruit and frozen stores are finished. So there's all sorts of different ways that you can store your food and the obvious ones are, you know, in containers but you've really got to be selective when you buy your containers because it's really tempting to go to the dollar store or the, you know, cheap place and be really excited because you can get containers for like three, three for a dollar. Three containers <laughs> for a dollar and I said, great, great, let's buy these. <laughs> so we did and Elizabeth was saying... Wait, because you know you've really got to make sure they've got good lids and they're sealable and things like that. And you can. We learned. We. <laughs> I learned that it's sometimes so it's, a, it's a false, false economy, economy because really, um, although it's really great to have containers and that they didn't. Like that, you, generally speaking, they didn't last very long, and there was also a, a significant <laughs> number of episodes where the container, when packed in the fridge, would with a bit of pressure from another food would pop open and then the contents of oily, fishy or whatever, <laughs> spicy gunge would then flow out over the rest of the food and across the bottom of the fridge, mm -hmm. which was not nice. You're probably better off to spend a bit more money and buy good quality containers seal. that seal really well and won't pop open if you compress them. I mean, some cheaper ones are okay when you're just doing everyday use but really and truly you, you know if you're going to spend the money you might as well buy good quality stuff that that's going to last you a long time so i'm ready for the official public acknowledgement that you bow to my greater wisdom oh wisdom. wise one you are the guru i'm basking i'm basking <laughs> <laughs> doesn't happen often <laughs> that i'm right and he's not so i'm really enjoying it um, okay other stories things the ziploc bags tell them about ziploc bags are really good um, and recyclable yes and you can actually make them into a bit of a vacuum as well if you if you seal them up properly usually the zips last and last and last you know so don't throw them out rinse them out wash them out really well clean them air them and recycle them again we don't really want to be you know throwing away plastics and things like that particularly when we're Yachties, that's just not kosher. So, you know, recycle as much as you can and the Ziploc bags are perfect yeah, for that. Yeah, they are great. Talk about how you get the air out of the Ziploc bag. Oh, okay, so, you know, you've got your, your Ziploc at the, at the top and you seal it so you've got almost all of it sealed apart from a little bit of air that escapes and you, you put pressure on the bag, whether you roll it or, or what you do, putting pressure on it and get as much of that air out as possible and then quickly zip it. The other way to do it is to do the same thing, zip lock it um, and then drop the container in the water um, and then just because the pressure of the water pushes the air out and then you just zip the last little bit, then it's you really have a wet trick. bag, you've got to dry the bag before you put it wherever you store it. And these things, you know, in Ziploc bla bags or in bags, uh, <laughs> I have too much coffee. <laughs> um, they're really good for uh, for storage because in a freezer or wherever you put them, you know, they they're lay flat flights. and you can just keep stacking. So they're really economical with the storage. Okay, let's move on to vacuum sealing. Okay, vacuum sealing is a really cool thing and. You know, you can get all sorts of different sizes of vacuum seal bags. Now, what you need to do with it, it's the same principle as we've just talked about with Ziploc, getting rid of the air. Um, you can get like a little machine that you put the, the food in, you put the bag on the, end, on the end, and the machine actually sucks out the all the air and then it seals it. Heat seals. Heats it. Heat seals the bag. And it's sealed until you, you crack it open. The unfortunate thing with that is you can't recycle those bags as easy 
although it can be done. Yeah, so I mean obviously with each time you seal it, you've got to cut along the seal, then your bag is, gets progressively smaller each time. So that's yeah. why it's not an infinite kind of um, reusable ability like the Ziplocs, but at least you get more than one use out of it. Yeah, but it, they, the food does last longer in yeah, these vacuum. vacuum seal than they do in the Ziploc. We've done it with cheeses particularly, and it's yeah. they've they've lasted so much longer than I thought they would last. Yeah, yeah. well, let's talk about the cheeses, seeing as you bring them up. Okay. Um, we, we love cheese, um, and, and cheese can have a multiple, a lot of uses, obviously directly on bread, but in cooking and in, in baking. It's one of those multi-use yeah. foods. And in salads, really we, we have cheese in all of our salads too. So so one of the struggles that we have is getting cheese when we're, when we're sailing. So what we did uh, to, to supply us with cheese over an extended period of time was go and buy whole cheeses that have their natural coating. Usually it's wax or something like that, and the whole cheese is sealed. Then we use the, the supermarket cheeses initially because these two cheeses that we had are Stilton, which is an English bl strong blue che cheese, and we had a Spanish, like a mature or a tasty cheddar. We had one of those each, and when we used up our cheeses out of the fresh stuff, we cut these cheeses in half, sealed the half in the bilges, and used the other half, cut those up into smaller sections, froze some of them, kept some of them in the fridge, and then worked our way through those cheeses progressively over the months. And it worked very well. Mm -hmm. um, cheese is relatively expensive, but if you get out of the US, it's even more expensive. So, and sometimes you just want a little bit. Yeah, and, and I mean, to be honest, this might be my Scottish coming out, but if you buy strong flavoured cheese, you need less of it. So the blue, the strong flavoured blue cheese, you use a very small sliver and you mix it in with a salad or into Did a you sauce. Say slither? Sliver. <laughs> <laughs> this is an ongoing conversation that we have because it's actually sl a sliver. VR. It's, it makes, it makes me sound like I'm, like I'm lisping. Hey, that's twice in the space of about half an hour that I'm actually right. <laughs> Isn't she happy? <laughs> um, anyway, we better no, not have a performance then, have we? No. <laughs> Talk about that later. And at home, we we buy Parmesan cheese, but we put it in the fridge. But you can buy it dry. And this lasts forever, yeah, I believe. So you I mean, can throw it in your cooking and you can, you know. 12 months or so. Yeah, it's, it's really good it's value. A, it's a great fallback when you run out of your other cheeses. Most people that watch YouTube, you'll see people sailing along with their fruit and vegetables in a net hanging in the breeze somewhere. Sometimes it's inside, sometimes it's in the cockpit. What this does, that's, this keeps the, the longer stored fruit and veggies well ventilated so they stay dry. Also make sure you remove any that are going mushy or dark because they're just going to make the rest of your food there go off too. Yeah. Containers in the bilges. Never put food in large storage areas in your boat and not have them in containers because if any one of those cans or foods go rotten or leak, you get gunge all through your bilges and it is a most horrendous mess. Mm -hmm. If you have your, your foods in different containers, then at least it's only one container. You can pull that whole container out, clean that out outside in the fresh air. You don't have to be guddling around in a confined Guddling? space, guddling. I don't know what guddling means. No, Scottish I've never term. heard you guddling. use that expression. Guddling is where you like this. Oh, okay, guddling. Um, and just following on from, from containers, all your savoury tins of food, have them in one container. All your sweet tins of food, have them in another container so that you've not got a big mishmash. What did you say? Guttling through. Guttling. 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 Through so you don't trying have to, to find through. The, yeah. try and find that one tin when you know it would be much easier if you knew it yeah. was either savoury or sweet. Uh, then also if you have tops on your containers, label the tops so you know what's in each container. You don't have to, or other people can find things as you well. You don't write on the container because that becomes permanent. Put on a little bit of white, um, tape. white tape or a little bit of um, duct tape or whatever and write on the duct tape. That way you haven't condemned that container forever to be the food container or whatever it is, you know, so you can just, just rip off the tape then. Okay, so we need to talk about um, cardboard. Da, yeah, da, da, da. yeah, so the process of storing the food, so you've bought it from the, from the supermarkets, 
you bring it onto the boat, what do you do? We got a, um, a message from one of our subscribers, Dave Peterson. Thanks very much, Dave. Hi, Dave. For that bit of information. It's all about cardboard. And, and the key with cardboard is cockroaches lay their eggs in cardboard. So you do not want to have any cardboard on your boat. If you buy things wrapped in cardboard, if, and you bring them onto the boat, take everything out of the cardboard and throw the cardboard away immediately. Actually, it's funny because um, we got that message from Dave when we started to record this yesterday. <laughs> so I'm provisioning. So one of the things with provisioning is you never leave labels on your tins or cardboard because cockroaches love it way too much. So you've got to write the name on the top so you know what it is. And if there's stuff you're going to use in the next week, I probably wouldn't bother. Yeah. But this is the stuff that you're putting down in the bilges and it's going to stay there for a few months. Mm. And of course, when you are storing your food in the bilges, depending on the sort of boat you have, obviously store it in some way in a container again, but make sure that container is wedged and so it can't move around. Mm. You don't want things sliding up and down in rough weather or falling over. All right, so... Um what we have on board which we found um, you know we've had on other boats too which we found really good is when you're eating breakfast lunch and dinner and you're eating it at the same place all the time and you're carting your salt and pepper shakers backwards and forwards and whatever condiments Jams you might use i just got a plastic basket that i keep in the pantry and all the things that we would need for breakfast you know your jams your peanut butter, your honey. Vegemite for Aussies, your honey, <laughs> Nutella. Uh, your Nutella, anything like that that you that you can keep in the pantry, um, put in the basket and all you have to do is then just take the basket out and plonk put it on, on the, the table. table. And then you, so, bring, then you bring the food out and it's much less hassle every time you take the whole basket back in and put it away. Yeah. Um, equally on the table we keep a, um, a basket as well but this is a nice basket that contains salt and pepper serviettes and a collection of fresh herbs that are growing mm. in the pots mm. so that stays on our cockpit table so that as we're eating our salads or foods we can actually pick some of the the fresh herbs and just drop them on our salad it's very cool like a lot of people we grow herbs on our on our boat so we have some home grown dill or boat grown dill that's what we had to say and we're going to pop it into our balsamic mixture of balsamic extra virgin olive oil garlic rosemary herbs really good on salad dressing shake it all about and then it'll culture and the flavors will infuse progressively over a few days that's right so that's what we use for our salad dressing we also have graduated into hydroponics which we will do a whole episode on hydroponics which is a whole other thing Talk, moving on to sort of hydroponics and growing things that's obviously the other strategy for giving yourself fresh food herbs and lettuces greenery once all your fresh stuff's run out yeah this is all about the strategic use of the food that you have yeah. so you the food that you have also lasts longer over to you madam thank you so you've got your lettuce so instead of just you know chopping a piece off your lettuce and then using that for your salad or whatever just you know take leaf at a time and you know you'll be surprised because the moment you chop into the lettuce or your cabbage it starts to oxidize and starts to go off and go limp but if you just peel the outside of the leaf one at a time you'll find that it keeps so much fresher you, you were mentioning there about it lasts a long time well do you want to give a rundown of how long the different foods last it, you know, it depends on where on you're cruising. Yeah. If if it's really hot, you're only going to get you know a short week and out it, of out of your your fresh fruit and veg. And it depends if it's in the fridge or not. If it's in the yeah. fridge, it's obviously going to last longer too. Yeah. Uh, cabbages will last. Cabbages cab will last a, a lot longer. A month. Um, they will last probably three to four weeks. You might be able to get out of them if you store them down in the bilge where it's cooler. Any of your rotable foods that you're storing for a long time, potatoes, pumpkins, the cabbage, carrots, and red onions. onions, those sort of things, uh, you put them in the bilges because down in the bilges it's coolest. It's, it's, there's a degree of cooling because the ocean temperature is not as hot as the upstairs part of the boat. But make sure it's well ventilated. So don't put the plastic top on those and make sure that you check them every week. So if any are starting to rot or do funny things, you can remove them and it doesn't ruin the rest of the food. Mm. 
So the other thing that lasts a really long time, which is one of these multifunctional foods is... We love um, multifunctional foods. We do, which is pumpkin. You know, you can use pumpkin for pumpkin pies and pumpkin scones and, you know, or you can use Sorry. it for savouries. You can use it as a meat alternative. You know, there's, there's so many uses for pumpkin. And what, instead of buying a big pumpkin, we buy smaller pumpkins that are sealed until you actually open them. So we found that by buying sort of like five or so smaller pumpkins last months, months until yeah. you're ready to open them. And when you open them, you'll use that smaller pumpkin. pumpkin and then before you go to the next one. So keep that in mind, it's a really good trick. Great. Well, John thought it was worth sharing what I'm doing with um, my sprouts. What I did is I bought some mixed sprouts. So there's alfalfa, there's broccoli, there's lots of different sprouts in this packet here. And when we run out of greens, like lettuce and you know those kind of things, we can swing into sprouts. So what I've done is I've got my mixed sprouts here in this side, and then I've also got some snow pea sprouts on this side. So I bought them like this off Amazon, but this is what the snow peas sprouts look like. No and this way. is, yeah, and this is after like 24 mm. hours of soaking them, draining the water and letting them absorb some sunlight. So at any time you can eat these because they're nutty and they're, you know, they'll just keep growing and growing. So you can decide whatever time frame you want to eat them. And with these guys here, they'll just sprout like alfalfa sprouts or broccoli sprouts. So they'll just, you know, almost be like kind of cotton wool, a mass of different roots and everything like that. But they're highly nutritious. And you can buy a packet of them that last you ages. ages. So a, a small amount goes an awful long way and that's absolutely fantastic. You don't use very many at a time. So that gives you fresh food. In about three days, you've got a really good bunch of fresh greenery to add to your food. Yeah, so it's that's a really great thing to do. And sometimes we don't even wait until all our stores have run out. We feel like having some sprouts. And the other thing we take on board is popcorn. Popcorn's a really good food because um, you know it's so easy to make. You just throw those kernels into a hot pan with some oil. Make sure you put the lid on, otherwise you're gonna... Have a party. <laughs> Be, be having a mess to clean up, but um, it's really great. And then you can either season it with anything you like, salt or sweet or whatever, and they're really good to take socially. You know when cruisers go to someone else's cruise for drinks? Uh, popcorn, again, is a really small when it's packed, but puffs up into this huge amount of, of food uh, for sharing around on the beach or at Really functions. good value. Yeah. Just great. And everybody loves it. Actually, yeah. Don't they? yeah. I mean, they're, they're very popular. Yeah. Let's talk about eggs. To store eggs, you should ideally buy non refrigerated eggs. This has actually proved to be a little bit difficult in the US. The refrigerated eggs can still be used, but they just don't last as long. You can buy them in the big, flat, um, large amounts, like several dozen eggs on top of each other, mm -hmm. because when you store the eggs, every week you should rotate them so they're not always sitting the same way up. They go off faster if you don't rotate them. And the other, the other strategy you can do, which is the sort of classic uh, ocean crossing trick that the uh, long-term sailors do, is coat them in Vaseline. I've never done this myself. It's apparently makes them last even longer. So as we mentioned before, we bought dried egg. And in order to make the eggs last longer, we did use the dried powdered egg for things like uh, baking, so we could keep the real eggs for breakfast or for eating yeah. directly, yeah. yeah. The other really cool secret that we have to share is essential oil. Now, this isn't just any essential oil. This is doTERRA essential oil. This is the only essential oil that we actually eat. We, we eat and we drink. So you can put this under your tongue, you can put it in desserts, you can use it for medicines, all sorts of things. So we take a whole bunch of these away sailing with us and we have, we can drop in and we can spice up any food. 
that yeah. might be lacking. So, I mean, one of the really spectacular uh, foods that you made was... In France? In France, yeah. It was a chocolate brownie, obviously chocolate cake and a chocolate Thing? icing on the top, mm -hmm. but she dropped in a, a, a drop of peppermint into the icing and it was just like, just gave it such a nice extra zing and equally you can use the lemon as a lemon alternative if you are certainly going to run out of lemons fairly quickly we do always take with us those bottles of lemon juice but again they do they do they do run out as well and they, they don't last forever but the lemon essential oil will last forever they are brilliant i wouldn't go cruising without them if you want to know more information about them just leave a comment and i'll get back to you about it because Honestly, um, it's these these guys are a game changer when you're yeah. cruising. I mean, the, as Elizabeth said, there are some that have um, medicinal purposes. There are anti-inflammatory, so she uses some for um, aches and pains or joint arthritis. It's you there, know, there are some that cause relaxation and yeah. mood enhancement, antidepressants. Some that help sleeping. And there's a lot of essential oils out there, but they add chemicals to them, they add uh, things to stretch out the fragrances and all sorts of things and no way would you ever take them orally or, or even want to put them on, the, on your skin actually because um, they're poison. But these are used as medicine, they are brilliant. I can't stress that enough. I've had, had, I've had my little rant. I think you've had your little rant. <laughs> I think we should move on. But we do use essential oils yes, and it is really do. handy. You have to decide what you want to drink while you're away. And of course, some things are both more expensive when you're away, um, depending where you're going, but also hard to carry. So for example, the more large the volume is, the, the more weight you're going to be carrying if you want to have a three month supply. So that's very impractical really to have a three month supply of beer or a three month supply of Coca-Cola. We certainly don't drink the soft drinks in that form. We just drink water or juice. So that's not a problem for us, but carrying beer is very heavy. One step down from that is wine, which is obviously more compacted, but the most compact alcohol is obviously spirits. So if you can move from um, beer to a spirit then obviously in relation to carrying this on board it's going to be easier and that's probably why so many people on boats drink rum mm. um, or they'll they'll brew their, a, own. brew their own yeah so that's the which, other alternative which is a whole other thing the thing that we do is we brew our own but it will be it's in the form of kombucha so this is a brilliant alternative to soft drinks and much, much healthier for you. And all you do is you basically brew it for 10 days with a, a, a good bacteria in, with some sugar. The, the bacteria eats up all the sugar, creates the fizz, and then you can add your different flavors, like you can add, add ginger, you can say you've got ginger beer, you can add you know, passion fruit or strawberry or, or anything you like. And the fact that is you drinking green tea is actually really good for more antioxidants. Antioxidants, blood hypertension, blood pressure, all of that kind of things. So if you want more information on that too, put it in the comments. We needed to have a process of making yogurt from scratch with stuff. Just the culture out of the yogurt. Yeah. So the way the way we do it is we mix up the, the powdered milk make it a little bit more concentrated than drinking milk. You heat it on the oven so that it's warm. You then add, you let it cool till you touch warm. Add the yo yogurt, a spoonful from your previous yogurt mix and uh, we put it on the engine. So on a day where you've been running the engine, we then do the yogurt mixture up, put the container on the top of the engine now that it's off, cover it with a towel. So stays there overnight. Overnight, in the morning you have set absolutely fantastic yogurt you just wouldn't believe and it tasted really good it's so good yeah yeah you don't need a degree in cookery to to produce really nice stuff the other thing that we haven't really covered is how much to buy for the time that you're going if you're going to be provisioning for whether it's one month or three months one of the suggestions that was made by the O'Kellys is actually track how much you eat and what you buy over a month when you're at home. Uh, we've never done that because we've just more done it from practicalities when we're sailing. Yeah. 
before you do your next provisioning, look at the stock that you've got left over because you will forget how much stuff is in there. And if you buy more and just keep putting it at the front, you, that stuff will stay there for 10 years. We have had food in our last boat that we pulled out when we were selling it and it had been there for 10 years. And, and when you restock your supplies, if you have cupboards where there is a front and a back, put all your new stuff at the back and use all the old stuff at the front. And coconut oil. Coconut oil, because you can cook with this. Um, you can massage with You that. can massage with it and you, you can, can put it, it on your skin. And your hair. And your hair. Anything else you want to tell Cashews. Me? Cheers. Yes. Chocolate. So I will be having my stash of chocolate. Um, oh, some brown gravy. We go through lots of honey because we sort of use honey as an alternative to sugar. Look, I, I guess, um, you know, provisioning is a really super important thing and, you know, you really need to put a lot of time and a lot of effort into it because it produces the end result of being organised and having the things you, that you need. And really, we're not talking about gourmet stuff, we're talking about really simple things that you can look up on the internet and even if you're not a cook, you've never cooked before in your life, you can be self-taught on the internet. So thanks for watching yeah. and, and thanks for subscribing and please again hit the like, subscribe and ding the dong. And catch we'll... us again in another week. All the best guys. See ya. Guys would like more buzzy honey. <laughs> this is a family show. It is. It's a show. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. You. <laughs>